Is Hyphaman's Deva the best overall value in headphones? For many just getting into audio or needing something with Bluetooth capability, $300 is rather steep and we want to make sure we're getting as much value for the money spent as possible. So let's find out if the Deva is indeed worth the asking price and if so, why? Greetings mate, Stuart Charles here, HomestudioBasics.com, helping you make sound decisions leading to a beautiful audio experience that will make you fall in love with music, not gear, all over again. So, I've had these headphones since July of 2020, and I figured I would go over exactly why they may be one of the best investments you can make in mid-fi. Let's go over five reasons. Number five, value. For around $300, you're getting a full-size planar magnetic headphone. We'll get into why planars are important later. A Blue Mini adapter for your phone which also doubles as a separate amp DAC. A balanced 3.5 millimeter detachable cable. We'll get into why detachable cables are cool as well. Do be aware that you will need a cable like the one that Heart Audio sells. I'll leave links below. Matching it to the interconnect of whatever your source is i.e. 4.4 millimeter, 4 pin balance, XLR, etc. Hyphaman's stock cable is only balanced going into the ear cup. The other end is a traditional single ended connection. The Deva also comes with a USB-C to USB-A charging cable that you can use from the Blue Mini to your PC. Lastly, you're getting a quarter inch adapter and a very well designed user guide. That's a whole heck of a lot of value for your money. Most headphones out there come with maybe a quarter inch adapter and a case, if you're lucky. The Deva really satisfies like a Snickers, and you're not you when you're hungry. Number 4. Versatility You can do just about anything with the Deva. You can use it wirelessly with a phone, using either the Blue Mini or something like a Fio BTR3K or BTR5. You can use it wired with your phone or something like a Dragonfly Red or a Hip DAC. You can also use it on your desktop with a supplied amp DAC or a separate one of your choosing. They aren't too hard to drive but happen to be fairly inefficient, meaning they need quite a bit of power from an amp to reach acceptable listening levels. Something like an iFi Zen will be perfect as you can listen balanced there with the 4.4mm connection. Because the cable is detachable, you can use it as a gaming headphone with something like the Boom Pro paired with the Creative G6. For console. You can also use an attachable mod mic as well. If you're on PC, you'll probably want to use something like a Blue Yeti, which I'm using now. Lastly, it has a built-in microphone for calls. Dude here. Number three, comfort. The previous Hyphaman generation headphones were above average in terms of comfort, but the Deva takes it to a whole new level. This is most certainly one of the most comfortable headphones I've ever worn out of over 100 at the time of this video. The clamp is just right, the headband padding never digs, and the cups are large enough to envelop your ears. It does tend to slide a bit at times, but that's a minor nitpick and does not apply to how it actually feels while it's on your head. Number two, build. I'm giving this its own section because it's super important to understand how far Hyphaman has come from where they were. At one point the quality control issues got so bad that audio advice here in my hometown dropped Hyphaman from their lineup. The 400 series models were also known for breaking down whether it be the bail, the shoddy yokes, the pads coming unglued, etc. With the new generation Deva, 2020 revision 400i, and the 2021 400SE, most of that has been rectified. No more connection issues, no more build issues. I will caution you about the ear pads as it still looks like they're attached in the same less than ideal way, but as long as you're not constantly swapping them out, you should be fine. Dakoni makes pads that Hyphaman should manufacture themselves, but that's a rant for another video. The Deva for me has functioned flawlessly, it really feels just right on my head, and I can't say enough good things about it. Number 1. The sound. The absolute best quality about the Deva is how it portrays recorded music. Specifically, instrument timbre and decay are two qualities about planars that makes them stand out from the crowd. They really give you a true sense of how an instrument may sound in real life versus the way it sounds through a conversion process, i.e. a DAC. In other words, the quality of said instrument its tone. You'll get a sense that the instruments have a lusher, richer quality to them, and tonality is a cut above like Vinny's Steakhouse. In some ways, it kind of actually feels like you're listening to music in a studio space rather than through headphone drivers, but these effects can be incredibly subtle and in large part depend on the track in question. Even so, the soundstage is above average and you'll frequently get the sense that some elements in the music kind of sound like they're occurring outside of the headphones, a common theme in good openbacks. You'll also notice a bit more going on in the composition, even more so than you will with a K702. 
This, in addition to the somewhat more realistic sounding decay of instruments and sounds, are what make planar slightly superior to dynamic headphones. I would argue that it's not going to be a night and day difference, but you will be able to discern it if you're listening closely and paying attention to the small subtleties and intricacies in the piece. The bass and mid-range on Hi-Fi Man headphones are also exemplary, and they respond well to EQ if you want to be all Metal 571 about it. I EQ'd the sub bass up a little and it got me really wet, harkening back to my out of control bass head days. You'll notice that the bass here has a more refined rumble to it and hits with more impact than a dynamic, sounding slightly clearer and more refined. The speed of the bass, as well as the entire sound signature, is just a bit faster and more resolving than cheaper headphones and with any type of music that you can imagine. I will caution you on the treble as it's a bit hissy at times. Still, you can EQ it down if you want to and to be honest, it kind of goes away the more you listen. So, if you're looking for a Bluetooth headphone that covers all the bases, the Deva is certainly worth a purchase and in my mind bridges that gap between mid-fi and something like an Ananda. If you don't need Bluetooth or the extra accessories, I would go straight to the Ananda as an upgrade from the lower tiered stuff. Every day and twice on Sunday. Don't overthink it. I'll leave all relevant links to our discussion today down below. Your support is much appreciated.